Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this multi image slider using the tiny slider library. All right, guys, before we get started, I just want to say that the reason that I'm creating this tutorial is because some of you asked me, how do you go about using the tiny slider library using the IMG tag? All right, so that's what we're going to be using in this tutorial. And also, some of you asked me, how do I go about doing this dynamically with JavaScript? So, for instance, if I had an array, uh, how, do, how would I populate this tiny slider with the images that I have in array? All right, so this is what we're going to show you how to do in this tutorial. All right, so before we get started, we have to bring in two libraries, and that's the Font Awesome and the Tiny Slider library. So let's open up our browser, and we're going to start off by searching for the Font Awesome CDN. You're going to click on the link by cdnjs.com. All right, go ahead and click here to copy the URL, and we're going to go up here. And just type in link and then control V. All right, and now we're going to go up here and we're going to search for a tiny slider. Let's go ahead and click on that. And let's click on the second link here. This is the CSS. Let's go back over here, type in link and then control V. And now we're going to copy the top one, which is the JavaScript. All right, we can exit out of here. And now let's go over here. This time we're going to create a script tag, SRC, and then control V to paste. All right, now we have our libraries. We can actually get started here. All right, the first thing we're going to do is create a section. Let's give this an ID of slider section. All right, now we're going to create two classes that are going to help us make this responsive on big screen sizes. The first one we're going to call container and the second we're going to call subcontainer. All right, now let's create the slider. It's well, not the slider itself, but a slider wrapper, which is where the slider is going to go. And not only the slider, also the title. So this is where we're going to include the title. For this one, I'm going to use Ferrari showcase because this slider is about Ferraris. All right, I'm going to add a space and now we're going to create the slider itself, but not the slides. The slides we're going to be adding with JavaScript. All right, so we're going to leave that like that. Now let's create another div with an idea of controls. And here we're going to add two buttons. The first one, we're going to give a class name of previous and the second one, we're going to give a class name of next. All right, and right in the center here, we're going to be adding an icon. So let's go back and open up a new tab. And we're going to search for fontawesome.com. And we're going to search for the angle left. So angle left. Let's go ahead and click on this one. Click here to copy the HTML and we're going to paste that in here. All right, now we're going to search for the angle right. This one here, we can exit out of font awesome. And we're going to paste that one in here. All right, and that should do it for the HTML. Oops, and I have a battery low. Give me a second while I connect this to power. All right, and typically I like to move on to the CSS, but in this case, because we are gonna be adding the images dynamically with JavaScript, there would be no point to add the CSS because we wouldn't be able to see anything. So for this tutorial, we're actually going to complete the JavaScript and then we'll move on to the CSS. In here, let's get access to our slider class. So let's do document, query selector, slider. And now we're going to create an object that is going to have all of the images that we're going to be using on this slider. 
Now typically you're going to have this object or array coming in from the server. But in this case, we don't have a server, so we're just going to create it manually. All right, let's call it cars object. And you can also create an array, but I want to use an object here because I think it's uh, a lot easier for you guys to see what we're doing. So we're going to add an image. And this is where the URL to your image is going to go or the path, just in case you have the image in your computer. Now, in addition to the URL, we can add other things. In this case, I'm going to add a model. And this is going to be the model of the particular car that this image belongs to. Um, I'm just making this stuff up, though. This is not really the model of this particular car. Just adding this so you guys can see what you can do here. Uh, so if you wanted to create another one of these, just add a comma there. And just copy this. And of course, this is how you would go about creating more. Just change the information here and add as many as you want. I'm not going to fill this out here. I think it's going to take too much time. I created a code pen with an object already filled out. Let me go over to it so we can just copy and paste. And I'll leave a link in the description to it so you can just copy and paste it as well. All right, here it is. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to replace it for this. All right, and as you can see, I have already pre-filled out all of the URLs and all of the other information. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to use a for loop that is going to go through this object and it's going to create a slide for each one of these images. Uh, before we do though, let's add an event listener that is going to call on that function, which we haven't created yet, but we are going to call it initialize slider. All right, so that function is going to get called as soon as we run this project. Let's go ahead and create that function now. All right, we're going to create a variable cars. It's going to be an empty string. And now we're going to use a for loop to go through our object. So let's do for let car in cars object. And this is where we're going to use the variable we just created. So we're going to add all of these slides onto this cars variable. And then we're going to add it to our slider class. All right, so let's go ahead and create the slide. So we're going to add our div in here. Let's give this a class name of slide. All right, now we're going to create an IMG tag and we're going to give it a SRC equals to the cars object. And actually I'm supposed to use the money symbol there with the brackets so we can get that information. Let's add car in there and IMG so we can access the URL for that particular image. And let me not forget to add an alt in here. I'm just going to type an image. All right, now let's create two BR elements so we can have a space from the image to the other stuff that we're going to add in here. We're going to add another div. And in here, let's create a H3. And this one is going to have the model of the car. So cars object car dot model and right under that let's create a, a p element and this one is going to have the type all right let's close this div and let's close the the other div, the one that the slide div. All right, just like that. All right, now that we have that, we're going to add these slides onto the slider class. 
So we already have that through the slider variable. And then we're going to do inner HTML equal to cars. All right, so as soon as we did that, I have this on autosave. So if you do not have that, go ahead and click the refresh button. As you, and as you can see, we have all of our images now here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use tiny slider to actually turn this into a slider. So let's go down here. And we're going to create a variable called TN slider. And then we're going to use TNS. And in here, we have to indicate the options that we want to use for our tiny slider. So the first one is going to be where is our slider located at? It's located in a class that we gave a name of slider. We're also going to use auto width, or we're going to set that to true because we are using IMG tags. So this is a little bit different than using the background image tag. All right. Let's use gutter 15. This is going to give us a little bit of padding between our images. Slide by one. So each time that you click on the previous or next button, it's going to slide by one image. You can increase that if you want. Nav, we're going to set that to true. That's going to give us those three little circles that indicates which image we're on. Speed, let's go with 400 milliseconds. And we also have to indicate because we are using a custom controls we have to indicate the class which we give an id of controls we also have to indicate the prev button which we gave a class name of previous and also the next button which we gave a class of next or oh, class name of next all right so now we officially have a slider the only thing is that the images are huge right now but this is actually working already so if i click on the next button we already have the next image here now we're going to use css to make this look a lot better all right so let's move on to the css all right to make this a lot clearer for you guys i'm going to start this off by adding CSS properties to the dynamic HTML or the HTML that we just added with our JavaScript. And let's start off with the slide class. We're gonna set the width to auto and the height to fit content. And for the actual images, we're gonna give them a width of 100% and we're gonna give them a height of 275 pixels and you might have to click refresh to see the images uh, I think it's because the images coming in from the URL are very very big um, and that's another thing I actually do not recommend for you to use URLs for your actual projects because these images are coming in really really big uh, I recommend you downloading the images and resizing them so they're small that way it doesn't slow down your website. All right, now let's go ahead and add some more CSS. Now, everything else that we're gonna add now is just to make this look better. We actually do not need to add anything else. As you can see, this is already working. It's a working slider, but we wanna make this look a lot nicer, like change the buttons, uh, make these uh, look better, and then just change a couple of things around. All right, so let's start off with the font. I'm going to use the Google font API. So I'm going to search for that. I'm going to click on fonts, Google developers there and click available to anyone. So go ahead and select a font that you want to use. I'm going to go with this Roboto one. I already have it selected here and I'm going to click on import. I'm going to select everything that is within the style tags. All right. So I'm going to exit out of there. And I'm going to paste that up here. All right, now I'm going to remove the margin from all of the elements. For the body, I'm going to change the color to white. And I'm going to change the font family to the one that I just brought in. Of 
course, if you brought in another one, then go ahead and include that one in there. All right, now for the slider section, I'm gonna give this a height of 500 pixels and a background color of black. And now I wanna place these contents in the center of this slider section. So I'm gonna use display flex, justify content center and align atom center. All right, now let's make this responsive on big screen sizes. So let's access our container and I'm gonna go with a width of 1600 pixels this is up to you really uh, you might want to make your width a little bit bigger or smaller it kind of comes down to what you want your website to look like I typically go with 1600 pixels and I'm gonna go with margin auto all right now let's complete this by adding some properties to sub container so in here we're gonna go with a width of 85% and a margin of auto so this is 85% of 1600 pixels, and this is going to ensure that we always have some space on the right, on the left of our website. That way, the items that we have on our website aren't so close to the edges, All right? And you can increase this to like 95% or even 90%. It's kind of really up to you, All right? So the problem with this is that because our width is 1600 pixels, this is not going to be responsive on mobile devices. So let's go ahead and add a media query down here. So we're going to do media max width. So at 1600 pixels, we want to change the width of our container to 100%. All right. And now this is responsive on big screens and small screens. All right. Now for the slider wrapper we want to set a position of relative because we're going to be using position absolute on these two buttons so we can place them on top of the images all right for the previous and next button let's go ahead and make them look a little bit different i'm going to go with a padding of two pixels width of 30 cursor pointer let's make them round with border radius 50% remove the outline and let's use a transition of 0 0.7 seconds ease in and out and this is for the hover effect that we're gonna add let's add a border 3 pixels solid white and background color I'm gonna go with black box shadow I'm going to go with 0, 0, 5 pixels, and BBB. And like I said, we're going to be using a position of absolute there. And let's bring down the buttons by 50%. But we don't want them so close to the edge. So for previous, I'm going to go with a left of 2%. And for next I'm gonna go with right two percent all right now let's add the hover effect to both of these buttons all right so when we hover this I'm gonna change the border to gray now Let's change the color of our icons to white. And let's also change the font size to one room. Now let's make these circles look a little bit better. So we need to get access to the class that Tiny Slater, Tiny Slater has for these. And that is called TNS-NAV. All right, where do we want to put these? I want to put them on the right, so text aligned right. Now let's actually make them look a little bit better. So we're going to use TNS nav button. I'm going to remove the border. I'm going to give them a padding of eight pixels. 
border radius of 50%, background color white, and margin left, 15 pixels, so they're not so close together. All right, now let's add the active class that is gonna make the current image gray or the current circle gray. So we do TNS nav dot TNS nav dash active. And we're gonna change the background color to gray. All right, so the current image is this one, which is the last one. Uh, so if we click on that, this is the first image. All right, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Please make sure to hit the like button if you found this useful. And I would invite you to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. If you did not find this useful or if it does not work for you, then you can go ahead and hit the thumbs down. Leave me a comment. Tell me what happened. I might be able to point you in the right direction. But that's going to be it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.